Good evening, everyone. I apologize for the slightly late start. We have this projector screen, but unfortunately a projector that is not cooperating with us. We're going to leave it down and our media services folks are working really hard to try to get it up and running because tonight's program is a really special collaboration between the Wind Ensemble and printmaking students here at Hendricks College. And our idea is to be able to show you these prints that the printmaking students have made and fingers crossed we'll be able to make it happen. If not, you can imagine and visualize as the students describe their works to you, and then you can come over to the Trishman Gallery at the conclusion of the concert so you can see these prints for real, and also eat some cookies and fruit and other things. So I hope you'll do that after the concert. So I want to thank, before we get started, I want to thank Professor Melissa Gill, our Associate Professor of Art here in Hendricks, because she actually incorporated a project that involved this connection between visual arts and music into her printmaking class, and that is how this collaboration has really happened. So we begin with a piece called Audubon by Ryan George, which as you might imagine is about the famous highway in Germany called the Audubon. So I'm going to share with you the descriptions of the prints that you can imagine are up there. Um, first, uh, a print from Mitchell Rotenberry, and, he, and here's what he had to say about his work. I, the piece I had was Audubon, and there were various parts throughout the piece that made me feel as if things were whizzing past me. These sounds, along with the description from the composer of the freedom of speed, gave me the idea to put the picture in the perspective of a driver in space. The reason for space is because of the vast openness where one can reach speeds faster than on Earth, and the meteoroids whizzing past the car reflect the sounds I mentioned earlier. I had used sandpaper to achieve a deep black background that has pieces of it resembling a starry background. So that's one of the images that, uh, that we have. And then another one from Leah Headley. Leah has this to say about it. This print was inspired by the shift in the middle section of Audubon before returning to the opening melody. It reminded me of anxiously being stuck in traffic and the instruments resembled car horns honking. Motivated by the composer's inspiration of speeding down the Audubon, I wanted to mimic the color of the sky on a clear day and disrupt the long continuous block of color with various shapes and materials to show the halting bursts of noise and mimic breaking taillights. So I hope this gives you some imagery to work with. We're talking about cars on a really fast highway. We hope you enjoy this first piece called Audubon. Thank you. 
We're going to move now to a beautiful, colorful piece of music that describes the composer's feeling on the month of October. And I'll invite you to imagine this really neat print by Victor Gomez with these really striking red and orange colors that he used. And here's what Victor had to say about his work. The composer of October discussed the variation in light during the month. The use of woodwind instruments like flutes and clarinets reminded me of a windy fall morning. I decided to use yellow and orange as my colors because I feel they conveyed a sense of change in light. With my piece, I wanted to paint a picture of a breezy fall morning. I believe elements like the swirls from the glue, the repetition of leaves, and the choice of color help accomplish this. I just want to mention that these statements that the printmaking students came up with, yes, they had some coaching from me and prof from Professor Gill, but when I read these just a couple days ago, I was just blown away by how descriptive, how into the music the students were able to dig to find these descriptions. And I felt that they were the best things that could possibly be said about the music that you're about to hear. So we hope you enjoy this really colorful piece of music, October by Eric Whitaker.
We are excited now to share with you one of the classic works of the wind band repertoire, Gustav Holst's second suite in F. And each one of these movements is based on one or more folk songs, and that is the thing that our printmaking artists really latched onto as they were thinking about what kind of imagery they wanted to create. So we have prints for each of the movements, and we have some of the artists here to talk about them. So first I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Sarah Long, who's gonna tell you about her prints that you can hopefully visualize for the first movement. Hello, my name is Sarah Long. I am a sophomore here at Hendricks College and I am a biology major. I was given the first movement of this piece, which is a military march and is also based on a folk song that is meant to be danced to. And in my, in my piece, I portrayed in the corner the British flag because marches are very patriotic and in the other corner, a trumpet a trumpet that from its horn was spouting the musical notes to the piece itself. And the notes themselves are arranged in such a way as though they are dancing to the tune of the song. Hello, I am Michael Crippen. I am a music and art major here at Hendrix with special interest in composition and printmaking. And for this one, I chose the second movement of this piece, Song Without Words, I Love My Love. Now, I was initially taken by the somber and dichotomous nature of the two opening chords of Song Without Words. Whole separation of the quadruple meter into pairs of half note length chords created an image in my mind of two juxtaposed figures connected to the ebbing call and response pulse of the music, as well as the harmonies that the chords present, as both are variations on the spelling of an F minor chord. Establishing the two figures as the focal point of my piece, the title, I Love My Love, brought to mind the idealistic nature so often associated with love, and by extension, classical Greek art, which I've then applied to the nude forms of the figures. Seeking to convey the desperation I felt was inherent in wholesome music, I also borrowed from Hellenistic Greek art to dramatize the female figure's pose. The setting for each half of my piece was informed by Holst's later vocal piece, I Love My Love which uses the same melody from this one ensemble work, but includes lyrics describing a woman in England's, in England's Bedlam Mental Hospital singing of her love that has gone off to sea, repeatedly exclaiming, I love my love because I know my love loves me. It was this line that secured the artistic composition in my head. A woman swathed in red from her passion and desperation, reaching toward her lover, and the man, drowned in the blue melancholy of the sea, staring longingly off the side of the ship towards the ocean. Both are faceless. As Holst sings a song without words, I seek to convey striking emotion in these figures without faces. We also have a print for the second movement from Amelia Dennis, and here's what she had to say about her work. The second movement of the second suite in F is based on the folk song, I'll Love My Love, and it details a woman longing for her love to return from sea and the gift of flowers that awaits. The song has a certain ebb and flow, therefore I created a shore scene with flowers in the waves to bring out the imagery created by the second movement. I'll also speak about the third movement, and the print for that was done by Jasmine Calixto, who had this to say about her work. The third movement is inspired by an English folk song called A Blacksmith Courted Me. In the song, a woman believes she will marry a blacksmith, but learned that he has married another woman. While listening to Holst's upbeat marching tune and keeping the somber tale in mind, I wanted to show the dichotomy between my auditory experience in gold and my emotional experience in blue. The anvil and hammer are made with carborundum grit, and the anvil striking made me think of sharp, bright lights, which I depicted with the use of stars in the photo. Saran wrap was used sporadically throughout the image to break up the wedding this woman had envisioned. And finally, for the fourth movement, we have Seth. Hey there, I'm Seth, uh, an R major here. Uh, when I first listened to this song, I felt a sense of discovery, as if someone was like going along on a journey. Um, there's a duet between uh, low and high tone instruments in the song, actually, and it reminded me of I had a moon landing, or I, I did a design of a moon landing, and uh, the hot, like the dark space, and the moon texture was just like the, the low and high notes in the song. Um, I used tape for 
the outer space with um, salt under it, actually, to create the stars of the print. And uh, for the, the moon texture, I did uh, sandpaper. So. Thanks very much. Please enjoy the whole second suite, after which we'll take a brief intermission.
So um, I'm Victoria Chu. I'm a junior psychology major, um, and I'll be introducing variations on a Korean folk song. Um, so in variations of a Korean folk song, it was inspired by the Korean folk song, Arirang, which tells of a story of a young woman observing the camp uh, camellia blossoms down by the wharf when she spots a man and falls instantly in love. In one telling, the young man she spots drowns while crossing the wharf to get to her. In another, he reaches her and they live happily ever after. I chose the color blue because of its ambiguity. Depending on how you interpret it, it can be happy or sad. The birds symbolize the two lovers and play to the clarinets and oboe and the flutes and the piccolos that are prominently featured in the first and second variations of the piece the motif of which is featured in the song.
hope you enjoyed that first piece in our second half, Variations on a Korean Folk Song, and now, as they say, for something just a little different. So Catherine Bergman is the composer of this next piece, and she is an exciting composer on the band scene. We actually had the opportunity to work with her virtually a few weeks ago when we joined her via Skype right here. The projector was right here, and she could watch us, she could hear us, she could offer us some feedback and ideas on this piece of music, and it was a really neat experience. She may very well even be watching our live stream right now. So through the wonders of technology, hi to Catherine Bergman in case you're watching. And now I'll invite Matthew Perkins to tell you about the print that he created for this piece. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm a senior and I'm a chemistry major. Uh, for my holograph print inspired by Dream Machine, I wanted the composition to illustrate the hypnotic effect created by the long notes and the use of repetition of notes by manipulating depth and proportion. The melodic sounds of the foreground combined with the brooding industrious sounds mixed within inspired the textures, colors, and objects chosen. All things considered, I wanted the print to represent how the music investigates the blurred lines between dreams and reality.
Thank you very much. Before we play our final piece of the evening, I just wanted to offer a few thank yous to some folks who have made this concert possible. First and foremost, to all of the folks you see on stage tonight. Can you join me in thanking them for all of the effort they've put into this? I also want to thank all of the printmaking students for creating prints, which I'll remind you are on display over in the Trishman Gallery. And I hope you'll join us after this last piece in the gallery for a reception and so you can see these prints up close and in person and perhaps even talk to some of the artists. And I want to thank also Professor Melissa Gill, Associate Professor of Art, for making this project actually one of the major projects in her class, which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm so thankful to her for collaborating on this project, thankful to, thankful to her for all of her work with her students, and thankful to the music and art departments and the interdisciplinary program as a whole for making this happen. So now to introduce our last piece, I'll introduce Katie Bell, who will tell you about the work she created for RS2. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Katie, I'm a junior, and I'm an art major, um, and I'm a student who got the chance to create work for this um, lovely ensemble. So um, my piece that I got to work with was RS2, which is a song about um, trains. Uh, RS2 is a train. Um, but in my work, you'll see that there is not a picture of a train. Um, so at first glance, you probably couldn't guess that it was about trains. Um, and instead, I decided to create a piece about the feeling that the song gave me. Um, so it's a march, and it's incredibly animated and energetic, but after listening to it over and over, um, I don't mean to project, but it became very overwhelming and kind of um, a little nauseating just because it's so intense, and it's a really fun song, and you'll really love it, but like I had to listen to it over and over to think of something to make, so I decided to um, sort of put my feeling into the work. Um, so the main figure in my prints um, is sort of bent over, hand over mouth like that, um, clearly nauseous, and I have string um, going around her head to depict um, motion, and I also, so the motion, um, or the string sort of shows the obvious dizziness, um, but I also wanted that to be like a nod to the movement of the train, since I didn't have like a blatant train in it, I wanted some subtle hint at um, movement in that as well, and in the back is kind of smoky to depict um, smoke coming out of trains, I guess. Um, so it's a very subtle train image, but if you really think about it, it's there. Um, so I hope to see you all at the reception afterwards. Thank you.